Hello everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you a technique for doing the opposite of what we have been doing with rational expressions. So one of the things we learn to do with rational expressions is to add or subtract them. So here's an example of adding two rational expressions. What we would do is we would find a common denominator. So in this case that would be x minus 3 times x plus 2 and so then we would multiply each of the fractions by whatever special form of one was needed so that they each had the same common denominator. And then, once we had that, we would be able to add the numerators and simplify, and we would get something like this. Now, here's a question today. What if we want to reverse this process? What if we want to start with a single fraction and end with a sum or difference of fractions. What's the process? And that's what we're learning today. Why is this helpful? Well, a lot of things you learn are tools that you're going to stick in your toolbox and use sometime later in math. I mean, not to mention the fact that they're just cool and fun to do, but if you're looking for the application, this is one that you definitely need in calculus at some point when you're learning about integration and different methods. So, this method is called separation into partial fractions or partial, frac partial fraction decomposition or, if we're lazy, we just call it partial fractions. So, I think this is notes 49 and we're going to do two examples and then you're going to have five homework problems. So this is example number one, and we're going to take this rational expression and separate it into two or more partial fractions, fractions that we could add to get this. So here's the process. First, you want to think about the factors of your denominator. So our fraction is equivalent to 1 over 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. So it seems logical then that this would break down into a fraction with a denominator of 2x plus 3 plus a fraction with a denominator of 2x minus 3. Well, that's the easy part, figuring out the denominators, but what about the numerators? We don't know. And so what we're going to do is call one of them A and call the other one B, and we're going to figure out what A and B are. So do you notice that now we have a rational equation? And one of the things we've been doing in this chapter is solving rational equations, and the technique we used was to look for the least common multiple of the denominators and multiply both sides of the equation by it in order to clear the fractions. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. What does that give us? Well, on the left side of the equation, the 2x plus 3 on the bottom cancels with the 1 on the top, the 2x minus 3 on the bottom cancels with the 1 on the top, and all we have left is 1. On the right side of the equation, when we multiply both of these things by our fraction, the 2x plus 3s are going to cancel, and what we're left with is a times the quantity 2x minus 3. And then moving on to the other fraction, when we multiply it by both of those, the 2x minus 3s are going to cancel, and we're left with b times 2x plus 3. Now, this is the equation we need to solve for a and for b. Doesn't seem like it's possible. How could you solve this one equation for a and for b? Well, we're going to break it down into the types of terms we have. So the next thing I'm going to do is distribute the a and distribute the b. And we have 1 equals 2ax minus 3a plus 2bx plus 3b. And would you agree that I could, instead of calling that 1, I could call that 0x plus 1? I hope so. Now here's the next step. We're going to make an equation that consists of the x terms, and we're going to make an equation that consists of the constants. Okay, on the left side of the equation we have 0x. And that equals, from the right side of the equation, 2ax plus 2bx. Now, I don't really need the x's in there. I'm going to call this 0 equals 2a plus 2b. 
and from the constants in the equation, on the left side we have a 1, and on the right side we have negative 3a plus 3b. Okay, now we have a system of two equations with two unknowns. Yay, chapter 3 all over again. Okay, so let's solve the system. You could use substitution, elimination, matrices. I don't recommend graphing. How about if we do the elimination method? So what if I divide the first equation by 2, 0 equals a plus b, and divide the second equation by 3, 1 third equals the opposite of a plus b, and then we can take that system and add those equations together and we'll eliminate a. So we get 1 third equals 2b, divide by 2, b is 1 sixth. And then if you look back at this equation here, that tells us that a has to be the opposite of b if they're going to add to 0, so we know that a is negative 1 sixth. Okay, now that we know a and b, we are almost done, but we're not entirely done. We need to write out what our partial fractions are. So our partial fractions were these things. We need to substitute the a and the b back in there, and we get a over 2x plus 3 would be negative 1 sixth over 2x plus 3, plus b over 2x minus 3 would be plus 1 sixth over 2x minus 3. Are we going to leave our answer like that? Of course not. We're not going to leave our answers with complex fractions that have fractions inside fractions. We can simplify each of these. So the first one we can write as negative 1 over 6 times the quantity 2x plus 3. If you're wondering, well, how did you just magically move that 6 from the top to the bottom? I challenge you, think about it this way. If you had 1 half oops, divided by 3, wouldn't that be the same as 1 half? times <clears throat> one third, and wouldn't that be one sixth? Wouldn't that just move the two down to the bottom? Wouldn't the denominator of the numerator become a numerator in the denominator? That's one of my favorite things to say. You should try that. Okay, moving on to finish the problem. <clears throat> Second fraction, we also also want to change this, and so it's going to be 1 over 6 times the quantity 2x minus 3. So this could be our answer right here. Or if we, like any good mathematician, enjoy rewriting our entire answer just for the sake of writing it with one fewer symbol, here's what we could write. 1 over 6 times the quantity 2x minus 3 minus 1 over 6 times the quantity 2x plus 3. Isn't that a lot more satisfying? Isn't that worth all the extra time and effort to write it again so that it has one fewer symbol in it? If you say yes, you are a true mathematician. Okay, that was partial fractions, example number one. Let's move on and do one more. Here we go. You can pause and write this down. Okay, so we want to factor the denominator and this denominator factors into x times the quantity x squared minus 1. And that would factor into x times x plus 1 times x minus 1. So, our fraction, and you know what, I don't want to get myself confused. It really doesn't matter what order you write these in but I'm going to write them in a slightly different order just so that I follow my notes and don't mess myself up. But it doesn't matter. They can be in any order. And if yours are in a different order than mine, and if your A and B are in a different order than my A and B, it's okay. In the end, we should get the same answer. So here's what we have now. We have 3x squared minus 7x minus 2 over x times x minus 1 times x plus 1. So, separating that into partial fractions, we will have a fraction with a denominator of x, we will have a fraction with a denominator of x minus 1, 
and we will have a fraction with a denominator of x plus 1. So what are the numerators? We don't know. We have to find out. Let's use a, b, and c. Now, let's multiply this equation that we just made by the least common multiple of the denominators. So we're multiplying by x, by x minus 1, and by x plus 1. Okay. On the left side of the equation, all three of those denominators are going to cancel with all three of those things we're multiplying by, and we have 3x squared minus 7x minus 2. On the right side of the equation, the first fraction, the x is going to cancel with the x, leaving us with a times the quantity x minus 1 times the quantity x plus 1. The second fraction. The x minus 1 is going to cancel with the x minus 1 we just multiplied by, leaving us with b times x times x plus 1. And the third fraction. The c plus 1 on the bottom is going to cancel with the c plus 1 we just multiplied by, and we're going to have c times x times x minus 1. Okay. Now, let's distribute and simplify the right side of the equation. So we have a times a quantity x squared minus 1 plus b times a quantity x squared plus x plus c times a quantity x squared minus x and that is ax squared minus a plus bx squared plus bx plus cx squared minus cx, and that equals 3x squared minus 7x minus 2. Now, think about what we're going to do. What did we do last time? We split it up into an equation with x terms and an equation with constants. Let's split this up into three equations. An equation with x squared terms, an equation with x terms, and an equation with constants. x squared terms, we have 3x squared on one side of the equation, and we have ax squared plus bx squared plus cx squared on the other side. x terms, we have negative 7x on one side of the equation, and we have bx minus cx on the other side of the equation. Constants. We have negative 2 on one side of the equation, and we have the opposite of a on the other side of the equation. Bada boom, bada bing. We know a. a is 2. That feels good. Now, let's go back and put 2 into our first equation. 3 equals 2 plus a plus, sorry, 3 equals 2 plus b plus c. So 1 equals b plus c. Let's take those two equations and make a system and solve for b and c. We could just add them and we will cancel the c's. 1 equals b plus c, negative 7 equals b minus c, add negative 6 equals 2b, b is negative 3. Okay, let's find c. So we know that 1 equals b plus c, so 1 equals negative 3 plus c, so C must be 4. Okay, not done yet. Even though I put things in boxes, I'm not done yet because I need to put those into the fractions. So A was over X. So we have A over X plus B was over X minus 1. So plus negative 3 over X minus 1 plus C was over X plus 1. 4 over x plus 1. Now, of course, I'm a true mathematician. I would like to save myself. Oops. Let's just say left. So I'm supposed to say left. Okay. I want to save myself one symbol by rewriting my whole answer. So instead of writing it like this, I can write it like this. 2 over x minus 3 over x minus 1 plus 4 over x plus 1. Now, I forgot something on number one. You were probably wondering why I didn't do this. You're probably very disappointed. I was going to check the answer. 
and prove that this really works. So let's take this fraction here that we had, this answer that we had from number one, and let's subtract these and see that it really gives us what we started with. If we're going to subtract them, we need a common denominator. So we need to multiply the first one by 2x plus 3 over 2x plus 3. And we need to multiply the second one by 2x minus 3 over 2x minus 3. Okay, so let's simplify our numerator. We get 2x minus 3 minus the quantity, oops, 2x plus 3 minus the quantity 2x minus 3 over 6 times 2x minus 3 times 2x plus 3. Simplify the numerator some more. We get 2x plus 3 minus 2x plus 3 over our denominator. Simplify the numerator some more. We get 6 over 6 times 2x minus 3 times 2x plus 3. Cancel the 6's, leave a 1, and then we could multiply those factors on the bottom and we get 1 over 4x squared minus 9. There it is, that's what we started with. That makes us feel good. Okay, back to problem number two. Now, I want to show you an alternative method for finding the values of a, b, and c. And you might like it better, and depending on the problem, you might think there are times when you want to use the first method and times when you want to use the second method. They're both useful. You might have a preference, and that's okay. And it might just be that sometimes one works better than another. So. Let's see if I can take a picture while recording. I don't know if this is going to work. Okay, there was a point in time when in problem number two we were right here. And at that point we did a bunch of distributing and we made three equations. An x squared term equation, an x term equation, and a constant equation. Here's a different method. Strategically and conveniently choose a value of x to substitute in the equation. I'm going to let x equal 0. On the left side of the equation, that gives me negative 2. And on the right side, I get a times negative 1 times positive 1. So that would be negative 1 times a plus b times 0, don't even have to think about it anymore, just 0, plus c times 0, done thinking about it, 0. Look at that. Negative 2 equals the opposite of a, so a equals 2. Now, let's choose strategically another value of x. What would you pick? I want to hear you say it out loud. Yep, you're right. Let's choose x equals 1. Okay, so then on the left side of the equation, we get negative 6. And on the right side of the equation, we have a, which is 2, times what? 0. Yep, that's gone. Don't even have to think about it. Plus b times 1 times 2. That's going to be 2b. 2b or not 2b? No, it's 2b. Okay. And then how about the third one? We have c times 1 times 0. That's 0. It's out of here. Okay, so negative 6 equals 2b, so b is negative 3. What do you think of this method so far? Now, let's choose... What's another one? What's another good one? Tell me. Yep, I heard you all say it at the same time. You guys are such good participants. I love it. Still doing it, even from home. Okay, negative 1. That would be an excellent choice. If you substitute negative 1 into the left side of the equation, you get 8. And into the right side of the equation, 0, 0. And then what do we get? C times negative 1 
times negative 2. So that would be 2c. So that gives us c equals 4. And those are the same numbers we got the other way, right? Okay, so you have two choices, two options for how you're going to do that middle part of the problem. Okay. So your homework is to do partial fractions worksheet number one. There are five problems. Please check your answers, ask me questions, and send me pictures. And I decided to go ahead and post the worked out solutions to all of them. So if you get stuck on anything, you can check your work. And if it doesn't help to look at the worked out solutions, if you still need to ask questions or ask me to make a video, please do. I'm here for you. Thanks, everybody.